Welcome to the first program in a new series of Real Gardens. As usual, we're going to be working with a varied group of enthusiastic amateurs and watching their progress week by week. But this is not about a quick fix. And although I hope we're going to be sharing their successes, it is about the reality of gardening at home. And there just might be a few failures on the road as well. This week, Anne-Marie Powell is in rainy Stockport, training a young couple to be lumberjacks. Coming back here again. Emma! <laughs> you want a proper path through here? Right? Yes, you do. Carol what Klein is with a planter holly, fighting her way through a suburban jungle in Suffolk. And I'm in a vast Norfolk garden, helping a woman with hugely ambitious plans. On the outskirts of Stockport is the three-bedroom semi which TV engineer Mike Woodall bought last year together with his fiance Alison Buckley. They plan to redesign both the house and garden over the course of this summer. The couple grew up on the same street and have known each other all their lives, but they won't live together until they get married next year. And if you think the place looks a mess, you should have seen the garden before they took it over. This is just a jungle. Six or seven foot iron weeds grass hasn't been mown for 18 months. Um, it was just a complete mess. We want children, and we want quite a few kids. Um, so the garden's gonna be practical for that. Um, Alison's a trained chef, so we'd like lots of vegetables, a nice veg patch. Herbs. Herbs. And colour, it's my main priority at the moment. I just want plenty of colour, massive colour in the garden, happy garden. Their 125 foot patch is going to take more than a bit of money. I don't know anything about gardening, not a dicky bird, not a thing, um, but I'm really, really willing to learn. Who better to take them in the world than Anne Marie Powell? Yeah, um, this is the back garden. It doesn't look like you then, this garden, it's not got your personality on it, has it? I've not done anything, all I've done is cut back and put a few roots, just gives a bit of colour for the shape. Mmm, so you don't mind? No, no. no we love it. <laughs> This area around here used to be a pond. If we walk down, we can probably see. Yeah. This, this, some sort of path here. At the moment, the badgers and the foxes yeah, and the cats use it, and the foxes then just through the bushes there. You get a lot of wildlife in this yeah. garden. Yeah. Well. Is that something you want to encourage? Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Definitely like to keep that, yeah. Make that part of the garden, yeah. yeah. Well, you've talked about everything that you've got in the garden, but what do you want to put in? Well, down here we want um, a big seating area, maybe decking so we can do a lot of entertaining. Don't we have a lot of friends down so we can do a lot, yeah, so then we can do our entertaining down in the garden. Water as well, yeah, yeah. Well, water. Water. I think that's going to be a big part. Well, that sounds like loads. That's all really. <laughs> My hands hurt already. That's what you're saying. Oh, <laughs>
needs controlling. I think get rid of some, give it away to your friends and keep the rest. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Right, tools out. Tools out. <laughs> Let's just chop this bit off first. Then I'm going to climb up, chopping bits down as I go. And I need a lift going up here. Does that mean I get to touch your bottom? I do. Fantastic. <laughs> Wrapping rope around the first big branch to come down so that I don't have to cut it all the way through. With the ropes, we can use our weight to snap it and we'll have a bit of control over which direction it falls in. See, I, now what I want to do is I want to tie it. If I have both ends, I've got control of it, whereas with, with one, you've no, you've no control over where it's going. Sure. Yeah, plus me, I'm a satellite engineer. The most important thing with a job like this is safety. I'm taking care to get out of the way of the falling branch. But if you don't fancy doing a job like this yourself, call in a professional. The three of us can pull this down. Are you ready? While I'm at the tree, this pruning saw is ideal because it only needs one hand, which means I can use the other one to hold on. Hey! Don't you reckon that now we've got most of that down, we're not bothered the third branch, just get it done. No, especially I'm, with the weather being so bad. I don't know, I just want to get it finished and over because it's horrible, isn't it? Yeah, come on. Right, that side. We're making the first cut at an angle on the side of the tree facing up the garden because that's the side we want the tree to fall. Are you ready? You're going to start, shall I? I'm ready. Then we cut downwards to make a wedge, which we'll knock out later to make the tree fall in the right direction. We also have to make a cut on the other side, but not all the way through. What do you reckon? Should we give it a go? If you want, yeah. Take it out then. Right. The ropes will do the rest. Look at it move! <laughs> Keep pulling. 30 minutes later, it's still raining and the tree still isn't down. <laughs> Yeah! Oh, that was hard work, wasn't it? I'm not coming back here again, <laughs> ever! These trees were far too big for this garden and sapped it of light, moisture and nourishment. Now Mike and Alison can start again with some smaller trees which won't spoil the view. That was much harder One than trip. I thought. Look at the state of Get us! Come on your face, come here. Back it off for me, darling. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you look much You've got a now. bit there as well. There you go. But next time, though, it would be great if you could get some more of this back area all cleared up, wouldn't it? Get yeah. that old compost bin out and all these piles of scrap that are all around the place, and we've got a real clean start then, haven't we? Yeah, we'll have to get stuck in, won't we? We will, yeah. The Jacqueline family are all keen gardeners. Yes, uh -huh. They live in an old farmhouse surrounded by an enormous three-acre garden near the north coast of Norfolk. But it wasn't always like this. Five years ago, the family were living in London with a garden barely big enough for a scratch game of cricket. Selling up and moving to the country means that they all have much more space and Brownie has taken full advantage of it, drawing up her own plans and almost single-handedly creating an elaborate family garden. You see, I've always had Can a bit of a me? thing about plants. And then I was the plant monitor at school. So technically, if anyone brought in a vase of flowers, then I was to find the jam jar. But we had bindweed growing around the blackboard and false chestnut seedlings in polystyrene cups and things. And I was told not to do it anymore. Martin used to be a professional musician, but he was attacked by intruders on the doorstep of their London home and is now severely disabled. So they've also had to do all of the work on a shoestring, as all they have to live on is Martin's disability allowance. The garden fills a space, I think, in all of us, between what we had in London before moving it because of being ill. Um, and for the children especially, it's a whole new world for them. To get the lay of the land, Brian is showing me around. Now, what's this greenhouse for? I start the seeds off in there. 
All the chickens use it for dust bath. This was All her greenhouses are second hand and none of them have any heating, but Bryony still manages to raise almost all the plants for her big new flower beds. I'm sure. So you've got these beds that you've carved out of the grass. Are you going to keep adding to those? Yes. Uh, a la Alan Bloom. Uh, yes. <laughs> very wet here, isn't it? Yeah, well, this is, the, I thought, the perfect place for a bog garden. That is official, formal bog garden, yes. designated. Yes. It was just a um, part of the, the grass, but uh, it also was, it seemed like a nice shape to mirror the, the pond. Because, I mean, this is not... Bryony has got plenty more plans for this side of the garden, but her first priority is to improve the view from Martin's bedroom window. At the moment, there are two lawns divided by a circular gravel drive in front of the house. The plan is to remove a section of the drive, join up the lawns, and create new border areas on either side. We've got a plan here now. Oh, that's very beautiful. So we're here, yep. looking that way. Yes. Drive has to go, curbstones have to go, yep. border has to go. And all these shrubs tree stumps, everything, has got, they've got to come out. Fine. And that gives Martin this fantastic view from his window. So that's his room there? Yep. So he can really appreciate the view through even to the top field. Well, that's, that's perfectly possible. What sort of time scale are you looking at? Oh, I should think by the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> In your dreams. <laughs> we will make a start. We'll make a start. <laughs> And helping us is Bryony's son, Christopher. Are you going to help us? I am indeed. Let's get on with it. We are shifting all the gravel from the area where the new lawn and borders will be. And lifting the curbstone from what was the edge of the drive. Luckily, they don't have deep foundation. Christopher and I can just about lift them out by hand. Meanwhile, Bryony has the less arduous, but no less important task of moving all the little plants that have seeded themselves in the gravel. What, what's the soil like under here? Oh, I think we need to have a probe. Pretty nasty stuff, isn't it? It's not a good colour, is it? <laughs> no, not a good colour, not a good texture either. See, it's got a layer of hogging. It's a, it's a stone and clay compound right. and it goes quite hard mm. you have to break that up and mm. mix it in and probably add some topsoil or some compost whatever you've got right come on, Christopher back to work next job is to dig over the soil in one of the new borders so that Bryony can get on with her planting now Monty I've, I've found a treasure here oh let's have a look this is a cranby here so I want to oh, pop yeah. this up oh yeah there it is there they're coming up Cranberry cordifolia. Oh, look, what I've just uncovered. Can you see in there? A poor little frog hiding in there, in amongst the cranberry. <laughs> I've disturbed him. I'm very sorry. That's very impressive. It's, I think it's quite a big one. I don't want to break the roots off. Oh, the ground elder is right in it. Yeah, I think we need Do what to... I do. I take it out. Tease it And out. clean it out. And Wash you... it under a, a tap. See, there, that's the root. And they're whoppers. I mean, it's nicely established, isn't mm. it? But... There you are, look at that. Yeah. That's the enemy. And if you left that in, it would totally swamp it and you'd never get it out. Yeah, that is enough to infest a garden. Ground elder roots will come away easy with a good soaking under the tap. And the best way to get rid of it is to bin it or burn it. Bryony has chosen mushroom compost to work into the new border, as it's cheap and not too rich for her hardy plants, which are used to the dry Norfolk soil. I think that if you don't work your soil yourself, you never really understand it at a visceral level. That's one of the reasons I don't like no-dig gardening. Yeah. Because, to me, no-dig gardening is like no-cook cooking, you know? <laughs> it's, it's half the point of it is to... Get to know your land, get to know your backyard. Bryony is going to have to finish this job long after I've gone, but at least we made a start on transforming her front garden. We must get this cranby in today. Gu right. Well, it's nice and clean, though. Yeah, guaranteed. Everyone that comes to the garden, they say, what is that plant? And... Right. Of course, it's perfect for your soil, isn't it? Mm. As long as it's got a decent root run and yeah. free draining... 
It'll grow anywhere, I think. But, and you know, we've got these big cabbage leaves and wonderful sort of miasma Huge. of white flowers. Make a big show. OK, happy? Yep. Good. Smells of the... After the break, Carol Klein is in Suffolk with a woman whose shrubbery is growing out of control, which is more than can be said for her vegetables. Welcome back. Now, cowslips are one of my favourite plants, and if you're lucky enough to have them in the garden, you can increase your stock really easily. Now, we've got a clump there, and that can be divided. But also, if you look there, there are little seedlings growing, and some more down here, the perfect size for just digging up and potting on. Just dig them up carefully. And there's just one there, and you can see it's got quite a nice root system there. Stick them in a little pot, with a bit of John in his compost and put them in a cool place until the autumn when you can plant them out, about nine inch spacing, by which time there'll be nice strong plants will flower next year. And by doing this, you're getting plants for free, you're increasing your stock of plants, and I don't think there's anything more pleasurable in the whole of gardening than propagating from your own stock. Now, we're off to Felixstowe, where Carol Klein's first real garden of this series is a jungle belonging to a plantaholic. Diana Harold lives alone in the suburbs of Felixstowe. She was married at one time and has three children who've long since grown up and left home. Five years ago, Diana moved to her present home only a few hundred yards from the sea, where a once beautiful garden had become completely overgrown. She's cleared the worst of the undergrowth, but it still constantly threatens to overwhelm her. Diana retired last year after many happy years teaching at a local school, and now she's got much more time to look after her garden, which surrounds the house on all four sides. But she still needs help, clearing the undergrowth, sorting out some of the more modelled planting, and finding a home for the scores of plants which she just can't seem to help buying. If I go out for a jar of coffee, I come back with a jar of coffee and a plant. I just can't leave them alone. Unfortunately, the garden isn't quite ready for all of them. That's why they're here, standing, looking lovely, but not in the garden yet. Diana is taking Carol Klein around the garden, and Carol can see straight away that the whole of her woodland area needs a lot of sorting out. <laughs> this is a jungle. Yes, it is a jungle. If you come past this bay and through here, yeah. I really need a walkway all the way through this shrubbery yeah. because in the summer you just can't get through it. But you're going to have to make some serious choices. I mean, right here you're going to have to decide which is to go your acanthus or your orchiba. I know which one I want it to be. I have got to keep my acanthus because yeah. in the summer you can see from the old dead stems that the flowers come right up yeah. and they're beautiful. Yeah, absolutely bad. beautiful. So this... Yeah, I don't like it anyway. Yes, has it all got to go? No, we can just give it a really severe chop. Okay, and then we can get through. Go on, forge your Lovely. Head. And Brilliant. here, got a wonderful clump of snowflake. Oh, yeah. Yes? Yeah, Leucoja mistivum. <laughs> I'll take your word for it, but I like to call it snowflake. Yeah, why not? It's yes. really beautiful. Look yes. at all these flowers to come. I know, I know, very pretty. I have got another clump further down the garden yeah. that needs moving. So where's this? Uh... Diana's got lots of lovely plants, but they've all been left to their own devices for so long oh, yes. that yeah, a lot of them need cutting back oh, or lifting and dividing. So we'll make a start with a clump of snowflakes by the bonfire site. A clump of leucogium in question. Yes, yes. <laughs> they yes, are congested, please. but they're still flowering quite well. Yes. They'd just be so much better if separated. And this is a jolly good time to do it. Yes. Even to... though it's flowering? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a shame because you'll lose the real beauty of the clump, but you've got others, haven't you? Oh, absolutely, yes. And you've got Loads. to move these sort of things in the green. Yes. You know, they've got to be in growth. Ah, look at that. I wonder how green. many are there. Good gracious. Is it all right to take the soil off? Yeah, it's better Even to take the soil off and is expose it? the individual bulbs. Fantastic fat bulbs. They are. Aren't they beautiful? Yes, that's what happens when you live on a bonfire. <laughs> 
We split up the clump into separate bulbs and we're going to replant them on the edge of the woodland. Is the soil going to be as friable and easy here? I think this bit should be all right. Where do you think? Round here first? Yes, and some round the back. Because you've got very sandy light soil, really, haven't you? Yes. Yeah, you want to make the hole nice and deep. I mean, this plant occurs naturally in the wild beside rivers and streams. Oh. So it likes quite nice damp soil, really. They do grow well all over the place. All over the garden they grow beautifully, yes, so we should be OK, as long as I water it in. Water them in and then also retain the moisture with a mulch later on, you know, just mulch them with some good leaf mould or some yes. old compost. Yes. Come on, then. Going to oh. have a go? <laughs> Once we've finished with the leucogems, it's time to turn our attention to Diana's new vegetable patch, which hasn't been entirely successful. What's happened to your sprouts? Yes. Right. <laughs> They've all blown, haven't yes. they? They've all opened. They, were, into... they, they are very sad. Did no. they go in rather late? Um, I don't think they were over late, but um, right. they certainly haven't done well. And have you planted anything yet? You've got some... Are they baby cabbages? Or? No, they're sprouting broccoli from last year. Oh, right. But I was too late putting them in. Yes. I was too late putting the leeks in. Um, they're very nice little leeks, very delightful dainty. Delightful leeks, yes. Yes, but you wouldn't get um, more than a gallon of soup out of those, <laughs> would you? <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. You're getting a bit behind, really, so how about catching up? I think we'd better. If we'd Diana better wants to do better this year, she's got to start sowing now. Let's sow these cabbage seeds then. Can you do the sowing? Yes. Uh, just a pinch, pinch of seed into each, each of these cells. Does it matter how many seeds go in to well, each one? Well, two or three. Two or three. Yeah. But who's counting? Because what you do is just thin them down to the best seedling, the strongest seedling later. And you have to discard the rest. You push them down first. Oh, sorry. Push. Just slightly. <laughs> Ta yêu nhau đến bạc mái đầu Mình cùng đi qua bao sông Cầm tay nhau đến bên bờ hạnh phúc Rồi tình cờ chung thấy em Tay trong tay bước đi cùng ai Lời hẹn thề chung đầy tên Ngàn yêu thương giờ này vỡ nát of the same compost over the top of them. Just a pinch. Mm -hmm. And then they need to be watered. If you pour some water into the bottom of that tray, because seeds are always better watered from underneath yes. anyway. And when you see the top of the compost is damp, mm -hmm. then we'll just pull it out and drain it off for a minute. Right. And then stand it on a nice, cool, very bright windowsill. Mm -hmm. And the lid? Yeah, put the, plonk the top on, at least until they've germinated. Yeah. And uh, in a few weeks' time, we should be planting these out in the garden. Lovely. Mm -hmm. 
Next week, Carol is going down to Devon, where she joins a couple of police officers who lead a double life as passionate gardeners. Anne-Marie is visiting a young mother who wants to transform her back garden into a children's paradise. And I'm back with Bryony here in Norfolk, continuing the good work. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.